Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our third example of how to solve a catenary problem. This is kind of an interesting one. Let's say that we have a cable hanging on one side and then we're pulling in this direction on the other side and the force is given and the angle is given. We're given that the angle is 60 degrees, the force is 500 newtons and the mass per unit length of the cable is 5 kilograms. That means we have to solve for the weight per unit length, and so that would be the mass per unit length times g, or we get 49 newtons per meter. What we're trying to find is we're trying to find h, the amount of the sag, we're to find x, the distance the cable is pulled to the right from the attach point, and we're trying to find the length of the cable based upon that information. Now, they don't specifically ask for c, but without finding C, you're not going to find some of these other answers. So we also need to find C in order to work out the problem. But you have to realize that if we pull this cable in such a way that the force acts in a horizontal direction, that force then must equal the minimum tension in the cable. And we have an equation for the minimum tension in the cable, which allows us to find C. So we can say that C is going to be equal to the minimum tension divided by the weight per unit length, and that would be equal to 500 newtons, divided by 49 newtons per meter, and that gives us a value for C. 500 divided by 49, we get 10.2, yep, 10.2 meters. From that, can we find the other parameters? Well, let's see here. Uh, we need to find h. Ah, I know what we're going to do here. Let's use the angle. In other words, we're going to draw a triangle with all the forces. Let me do that over here. We have the force pulling in this direction. That's F, which is equal to T sub naught. We know what that is equal to. We have the weight of the cable. And I think I need to attach that over here, otherwise it won't work out. So we have the weight of the cable right here, which is W, which is equal to the weight per unit length times S. And that may allow us to find the S value here. And then we have the tension in the cable in this direction. That would be T max or T. We have the angle, this angle right here, which is 60 degrees. Since we know this value here, we can calculate this value through the tangent of that angle. We can say that the tangent of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is the weight per unit length times the length of the cable, divided by F. And in other words, from this, we should be able to find S. Therefore, S equals F times the tangent of 60 degrees divided by the weight per unit length multiply that times that, divide by that, we get the length is equal to 500 newtons times the tangent of 60 degrees divided by W, which is 49 newtons per meter. And let's calculate that. So we have 500 times, take the tangent of 60, divide by 49, and we get a length of 17.67 meters. That is S equals 17.67 meters. So now we have S, we have C right here. Now we still need to find H and X. Next, what I can do is I can use this equation right here to find Y. Because then essentially, once I find Y, I can find relate y to x through this equation right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this equation to find y since at this point I know s and I know c. That allows me to say that y is equal to the square root of s squared plus c squared which is equal to the square root of 17.67 squared plus c which is 10.2 and I squared it as well and that will give us the value for y. So we take this, we square that, plus 10.2 squared, take the square root of that, and we get 20.41 to the nearest two decimal places. So 20 point, I'll just write 20.4 meters is the value for y. 
and since C is equal to 10.2, that allows us to find H. We can now say that H is equal to Y minus C, which is equal to 20.4 meters minus 10.2 meters, and it looks like H is exactly equal to C, 10.2 meters. So now we also have H. The only thing left to do now is to find Y, and that's a little bit more tricky. We're going to use this equation right here, and we're going to divide both sides by C, which means we end up with Y divided by C is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of X over C. Now notice we know everything here except for X. So if we then take the inverse hyperbolic cosine, we can then write from this that X divided by C is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of Y over C. And if I multiply both sides by C, I can then say that X is equal to C times the hyperbolic cosine of Y over C. Now all I have to do is plug in the numbers. So X is equal to 10.2 meters multiplied times the inverse hyperbolic cosine of Y, which is 20.4 divided by C, uh, C, yes, which is 10.2. So I'm taking the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 2. So I take 2, the inverse uh, hyperbolic cosine, all right, that gives me 1.317 and times 10.2. So let me write that down so you can see what that is equal to times 1.317 and so times 10.2 and I get 1 point oh 13.43 13.43 meters and remember that was equal to x x was the value from there to there now s should be a bigger number that makes sense I'm just trying to take a look and see if that seems reasonable but the x value let me that is equal to x right here, let me put that there. So now we have all the values we're looking for. We notice we found c and h, c was 10.2, h was 10.2, so they had the same value, and then the total height from the lowest point on the cable to the attached point would be, oh no, for the total height from here to there, y would be double that, or 20.4 meters. The sag is 10.2. Also notice that the length of the cable was 17.67, and then the horizontal distance from the attached point to here was going to be 13.43 meters. And that's how you find all the various values. Again, notice you need all these equations, plus we needed to use the relationship between the angle and those various forces to find all the answers we were looking for. A very good example indeed. On the next video, we're going to take the same kind of problem, but we're going to change the force to see how that changes the angle, or change the angle to see how that changes the force, to see how that is related on a catenary problem like that. So stay tuned, we have another interesting problem for you.